Welcome to the administration video for Airflow. So right now we're here at the Joomla home screen for the control panel. And we're going to start here with the menu systems. If you're not familiar with the Joomla menu system, I suggest that you look on the internet for some good videos about managing menus inside of Joomla, especially Joomla.org and the training videos. So this is going to be kind of brief because I assume that you already know how the menus work. So the one thing I want to show you here is here is our home page and then these are our sub items here for the drop down. So what you would do to have a drop down menu is you would have a parent item here and then say this one, the style URL, you would select the parent item home. So that will give you the drop down. Next, I want to show you the alternative layouts that we have in the template. We did some special overrides inside of Joomla, so you can have alternative layouts. Here is the cascade grid. Let me show you how that is achieved. So you go here to menu item type, select, go to articles, and right here you see all the different types of layouts we have. We have our FAQ blog, we have our featured cascading grid, we have the cascading grid, we have our pricing tables, and so on. So you would just select the cascading grid, and then your blog layout over here, you can select your nine intro articles and your columns three, and so on. So that's how you go ahead and assign the category overrides from the menu. And that goes for the FAQ, the featured, and so on. So let's get out of the menu system here and get right to the stuff. So let's talk about setting up the home page. So on the home page, we have extensions and we have modules because that's how Joomla is built with module positions and the component. So let's go ahead and select our search tools and let's select position here so we can start from the top. So we're going to start with the inset. And here we have inset text. And this is the text that is on top of the balloons and with the logo. So we'll pull this window out here and we'll see that we have an inset logo div class. This wraps the whole thing here. And this is what gives it the positioning and the alignment. And you can find this inside of the style CSS. Now we have a center here. And then we have this little thing here. This div data sr equals reset wait five seconds enter left please and hustle 200 pixels over five seconds so what that is that is scroll reveal js and this is just a simple way that you can add effects when you scroll and as you see here it's a very simple way to write it you know we even have nice little words in there like please so what we're doing is we're telling it to reset so every time that it scrolled to that area it will affect it. If you take the reset off, it'll only do it once. Then we're telling it to wait five seconds before it starts. Then we want it to come in from the left and hustle. Hustle is the way it's going to slide in. And then 200 pixels over 1.5 seconds. So it's pretty easy to understand this. If you need more information on scroll reveal, just look up scroll reveal JS, go to the GitHub and look at the wiki. That's where all the documentation for all the keywords are. So then we have our image, and this is just calling the Airflow logo PNG from the Core Joomla Images folder. And you can see we have that wrapped right here in this scroll reveal div. So that moves it that way. Then we have the text in another scroll reveal because we want it to come in from the right. So from the left and to the right. And we have our standard H2, our P class, a break, div, closing the center, and closing the div. So right now we have no special module suffixes and that's all that's going on in this module. So now let's go to user one. User one, let's look at choose your adventure first. This is the deluxe news pro module. And this is what has the uh, four different options for the different adventures that uh, the user can choose. So as you see, this is all blank here and it's set up for four columns, one row and one page. Columns is four, 
rows is one, and then pages, that's set if you're going to have multiple pages, if you want it to uh, have a slider or a fader or whatever, here's your display styles. But since we just have it set up for four columns in this one, we're just going to look at this. So you might be wondering how you edit this. Right here, there's an edit button. And as you see here, now you can edit the text that's in there. Choose your adventure. Here's our little circle, our mo title, and here's the text. The main area right here, this refers to this main content area. And this is the layout of it with the thumbnail, the title, the intro text. If you need to edit the CSS, once you click the edit button, you go over here to advanced and you will see the custom CSS. Pull this out and we can get a better view. Once you've made your edits, you can go ahead and save it. And once you've decided to commit it, what you will want to do is you'll want to look in our documentation of how you save this to the actual template folder inside of the module. Because right now, what we're doing is we're, we can edit it, but this is actually going to be inline CSS. So that means that it's actually going to be called inline in the template. So once you've gone ahead and saved everything, you've got it the way you want to do it, you want to commit it to the file because this is actually pulling the HTML from a file within the module. It would be really great if we could go ahead and say, okay, we want to save this, but that's not how Joomla modules work by default. And what we do with our templates and with our extensions, we try to be 100% Joomla standard and Joomla compatible. So we're not using any extra JavaScript in this module to go outside of Joomla and do actions. So now that I've done this, I'm going to go ahead and close and we're going to move on. Next, we have the breadcrumb. The breadcrumb is on the subpages. If you look at a subpage of the template, you'll see that there is a title on the top of every page, and that's just using the standard Joomla breadcrumb. So the breadcrumb, we don't have the UR here on or the home. We want to show the last, and we have a text separator here. And that's basically it for this. So now we're going to go here to our user 13. This is the high-flying action with the guys skydiving and the text. So let's go ahead and open this up. And you'll see here that the guys skydiving in the background, that's all taken care of in the template manager. All that this is doing is delivering the text. So we're using a standard bootstrap class here. We're saying span for and we're offsetting it to. Offset is pushing it from the left over to the right by two spans. So the span for, and then we have again, our scroll reveal. Then we have our high flying P. Then we have our H3 class action. We have our P class small. And then we have our button here. No module class or suffix. So we can go ahead and move on. Next we have user 19. This is the testimonials block. Again, it's another HTML module. Here in the HTML module, we have the href, which goes to our testimonial page. We have a row fluid because we're starting a new bootstrap row. And we have testy wrap that gives it a class. Then we have a span one, and we're actually calling an I class of FA user here. The FA user is a font awesome icon. If you look at the template typography page, you can see all the font awesome icons. So that's actually displaying the little user icon. That's a span one. Next, we have a span four, and that's a testimonials H3. So it says testimonials. Then we have a span seven that has the text. So if you're unfamiliar with Bootstrap, Bootstrap is based on a 12 column grid. So all we're doing here is this is one column, four columns and seven that equal 12 and that's the row fluid. And then we close everything with the A, so it's all wrapped in an A, so the user can click on it and see the testimonials. Now moving on, we have user 25. This is our contact wall. Our wall modules are set up basically the same, so if once you understand one wall module, then you're going to understand all of them. There's some different tags and stuff, but let's go ahead and look at this. This is the same as basically our News Pro module. 
So here under the columns, we have three columns. We have one row, and we want to have two pages. So you can scroll two pages. We set this up for a horizontal slider, and we set it up for left and right. And here we selected our button style. These are our buttons. So right here you can select to see all the button styles. And we have, uh, I think, uh, over 50 button styles here. You can also use CSS buttons. Um, you can look that up in the documentation for the contact wall. These are all image buttons. So we've gone ahead and chose these image buttons. And then we've got the template here selected, the staff. So just like the News Pro, if you want to edit the module and the text that's in there and such, click the Edit button. So here you see in our module HTML template, we have our contact title, span2, meet the team. We have our span10 that gives us our 12 columns with a 2. Here's the contact main. Here's the main area. Here's the contact buttons. So the contact title here, you can see that inside of the style CSS. That div class there is actually rotating the text. And that's what gives the text rotation. So down here inside of our contact, so we have our layout for each one of the panels. So here's Airflow Contact Wrapping Div. Here's the AHREF to the contact URL to send them to the contact page. Here's our wrap for the contact image. So we've got an image calling the contact image URL, and our alt is a contact name. Then we have a div class. Airflow contact enter with our contact name, their position, and the miscellaneous info from the Joomla contact module component. So let's go over here to the advanced settings real quick. Here's where all the CSS is. And right here inside of this module, you'll see here's the contact title. Here's where we're doing the WebKit transform rotate negative 90 degrees. So if you want to edit the way that the text is displayed, you can do it right here inside of the CSS. And we have all the breakpoints here to be responsive. And we're going to go down here and we're going to make sure that our layout is selected Bootstrap because we are using Bootstrap. We are using Bootstrap 2 because the core of Joomla uses Bootstrap 2 right now. We're anxiously awaiting Joomla 4 to where we can move to Bootstrap 4 or 3 or whatever actually happens when it's released. I believe by the time Joomla 4 is released, Bootstrap 4 will be the standard. But for right now, we're using the core of what's inside of Joomla and what is Joomla standard, which is Bootstrap 2. So we'll move on now. And let's go to user 31. Heart pounding thrills. Okay, so this is basically the same thing as the high flying action. It's just a custom HTML module. We have our span 6, offset 7. We have hang as a class. We have our scroll reveal setting. Then we have our heart pounding. Then we have our thrills. Then we have our key. And we have our button that links to our adventures page. So very basic HTML here. So let's go ahead and go on to user 37. In user 37 is our specials. And this layout is uh, almost identical to the testimonials. So you have your row fluid that we're starting a new bootstrap row. We have our span one with our I class, our font awesome, thumbs up, then our span eight with the title and the H3 and the P, and then our button save now. Next in user 43, we have our connect with the team. This is our contact wall. Again, another wall module, but we're doing something a little bit different here with the, this contact wall. Since the contact wall connects with the contact component, we're able to go ahead and put an email form in here and use the token from the contact. So if you want to edit this, you can click the edit button again. And you can see down here, we have the connect with the team. Then we have our markup for our input fields. Down here, we have our token that sends it. And then at the very bottom, we have our social bottom. And if you want to go ahead and put your own links in here for the social icons, you can put them right here in the hrefs. And then we have our I classes. So if you want to add or remove, you can do it right there. 
And then you can go ahead and save this and it's all saved. Again, I would suggest that when you're ready to go live, you go ahead and you commit this to the file, which is inside of the modules contact wall under the Airflow Connect U43. And this would be right inside of there in the file. And you can look at that under the documentation of how to do that. Now in user 44, we have our locations text. And what this is, this is simply the text for the nationwide locations that is to the right of the map module. What we're doing here is, since we need to have a rotated text for the map link, we don't really have a place to put that in the map link that's going to work right, so we just created a module and we created a title to go to the left of it. And on this one, we have a module class no margin and no pad. No marge, no pad, that means the module does not have any padding or margin as assigned in the template parameters. So we'll go ahead and close out of here. And now we're going to look at the bottom would be our right nine is where we have our map link. We're using our map link United States. So here you can set the map width, all the colors inside the map, the area customization. Here's where you can enable a state, put the title in, put text, put a URL, and have a tooltip, and set the color and the hover color. We offer a lot of different map link modules. You can go to our website and look at our map links. If you're not in the United States, I'm sure we have a map link module that will work for your location. Under the advanced settings here, we have a notepad LR. That means notepad left and right. And we're not loading Bootstrap because we're already loading Bootstrap in the core of the template. Now we're going to move to the bottom modules. We have bottom one, which is our links, which is just a Joomla menu module. To get this set up correctly, you're just going to want to go over here and set it to your menu item. And then under the advanced parameters, set the layout to the bottom menu. And this is for bottom one through three. In bottom four, we're going ahead and we're calling an image for our logo. So we have some pretty simple markup here inside of our HTML module. We want the Airflow logo here, and then we have our bottom logo text with Airflow and High Flying Adventures. So now let's take a look back at the adventures that were in user one. Choose your adventure. So when we click the edit button here, you see that we have our wrap for the news pro, we have our effect here, and then we have field thumbnail, which is calling a thumbnail. What we've chosen to do here in the template is give you the option to use the new Joomla extra fields for the thumbnail, so you're not delivering the huge article image. Because most of the time when you have an, an intro image, you know, if you have a single column, um, and you have a category blog, you're going to need that intro image to be anywhere from like 980 to 1280, depending on the width of your site and if you have a sidebar. So that's actually going to be delivering uh, to your homepage, if you're calling the intro image, uh, a huge image, even if you have a very small area. So what we've chosen to do is add a thumbnail field inside of the Joomla content extra fields to allow you to call the thumbnail. So this is the tag for the field. It's just field and then the name of the field. So we're calling the thumbnail. Here's the title for the article and the intro text. And the link here is the A link. And language, this is what spits out the read more. For more information on the Deluxe News Pro, look up the documentation. It has all the tags inside of it and shows you some advanced layouts and everything that you can do with it. So now that I've shown you this, let's go and look at what we're actually doing for our content. So let's go to our articles now, and we can go here to the category, and let's look at adventures. So here we have our flight lessons, our balloon ride, our hang gliding, our skydiving. So let's check out balloon rides. 
So on the balloon rides, we have the normal Joomla, <clears throat> the content, the images and links, options, share. This is for the, the sharing plugin that we have inside of our template manager. So you can put sharing links and the thumbnail. So as you see, you can upload the thumbnail right here and select it. And let's get a preview of it. And that's our thumbnail. As well, here inside, we're using our plugin for our app book to show the booking form. So here we just have our app book ID one, and that's for the app book ID. So let's take a look at that now. Let's go to components and appointment book. So in appointment book, we have four different calendars. We have the balloon rides, for instance. So we have our calendar name, we have our availability, we have our schedule, our duration, and so on. The fields over here, these are the appointment fields. So if you want to add uh, more questions in here, you can just add a new field and select a new line. The calendar profile, this is what sets up the, the look of the main calendar page when you enter to select which calendar you wanna use. So we're just calling the balloon thumbnail App book image, balloon rides H3, the app book button, and calling the booking form. Now we'll move into the templates and the template manager. So here under the Airflow default, we've got our template manager. And this is going to take just a moment to fully load because we do have a lot of parameters going on inside of here. So here under the details, the default layout is Bootstrap. That's all we have right now is a Bootstrap 2. We're advancing our framework to handle Bootstrap 3, Bootstrap 4, and some of the other CSS frameworks that are out there. But right now, we only have one selection. So here's the layout. You can view the layout of the template. If you click on this, you can say, okay, this is the Bootstrap 2 layout. And this shows our layout, and you can zoom in to see as you see here, we have over 100 module positions. Here's the framework documentation link, and here's the support link. The grid style is set for default. Template style, we have four styles that you can select. So if you want to change a style for the front end, you change it here. Typography, we only have one style now. And custom options, we have one style. The reason that these are drop downs is that as we build the framework out, we will have uh, more styles. And if you want to expand the framework, you can go ahead and change the typography style and add a new style. You can look at the XTC framework documentation to see how the XTC framework actually works and how you can add new styles. So under the grid here, we have the responsive feature set to yes. And that's a good idea. Right now it's um, using the responsive features. And what this does is it, it calls the bootstrap responsive and we also have inside of our template some responsive features that are set inside of the CSS. So you really want the template to be responsive because if you don't know yet, if your client is telling you that, no, I don't want everything in one column, I want it to look just like it does on the web page, you have to explain to them that Google is now punishing you if your site isn't mobile. In fact, they even have a site checker to tell you if you're mobile compliant. So. You might want to let your client know if they're being very extreme about that, that you know, you're not going to get a good ranking on Google unless you're fully responsive and mobile friendly. So here is our body. We have the body width set to 1280. You have many selections here for the different widths you can choose, or you can type it right in there. Body padding is zero. Mobile body padding, we have a bottom 120 pixels for the body padding for mobile. So here you set the body width and padding, and for your mobile, you can set an alternative padding here. For the header, we have a sticky header, yes. Our header width is fixed. So we're gonna see this a lot inside of the grid, and it's fluid or fixed. Fixed means that it's gonna adhere to this body size of 1280. Fluid means it'll go all the way out to both sides. So we want to have the header fixed in at 1280 for the content of it. Doesn't matter if we have the background going full width 
but we want everything to be in the fixed width. So the header height, this is the height for the header. We want it 100 pixels, and this is the padding for the header. You see we have different header device padding here for the mobile view, for the device view. And that's just in case that you need to make your header bigger or smaller for mobile. And that takes place in a lot. That's why we actually have different padding for the desktop to mobile. Because in a lot of cases, you might need a little padding when you're set up on your desktop, but you might want to have a little more when you're on mobile. So we give you options for both of those. So here's our menu, our menu wrap padding. This is the outer wrap of the menu. This is the menu item padding for each menu item. And then this is the menu item spacing. This is the spacing between the menu items and pixels. And that just gives it a margin. And this padding here is the padding. Now for your drop down menu, we have a drop down menu animations here. These are all CSS3. We're using the core bootstrap menu for the drop downs and for the menu. And we've added some additional styling to get it the way that we wanted it to look. And then you have all of these different drop down effects here to choose from. So here we have fade and right. And you can choose fade, slide and down, slide and up, slide and left. But this is all, all the animations done with CSS, no extra JavaScript required. Now we have our menu style. We have a one column, a two column, a three column, or a four column. Next is the drop down width. We added this recently in our framework because a lot of people have been asking, how do I change the width of the drop down? So now you can go ahead and change the width. Please note that when you change your columns here, you might want to need to increase the width or decrease the width. Here's the menu drop down padding for the outer wrap and the menu drop-down padding for each item. And you can position the, the menu to the left, the center, or the right. Now we have our basic module setup, and this is the separator between modules vertically. We have zero here, and the module padding, the padding for the inner of the module. Next is our region layout. Our templates are based on regions. If you're not familiar with our region layout, uh, you can go ahead and check out the layout and see that each module position is essentially inside of a wrap for the region. So we have the inset, which is inside of region 1, and then user 1 through 6 is inside of region 2. And this is what gives us uh, the different layouts. If you watched the first video, you saw the alternative layouts that we have for the different layouts. If you go to our demo, you can look at the layouts dropdown and see the different layouts. All we're doing here is changing the region order. So what we really like about the region ordering is this allows you to quickly move around positions inside your template. So you might construct your template and look at it and go, well, it might be nice if this area here was above this area. Well, then it's good. If that's region six, then you can take region six and move it over here. Or let's say you're only using six regions. You're only using one, two, three, four, five, and six. You're not using seven through 12. You can remove these right here and lessen the load time of the site. But remember, you always want to have region three. Region three holds a component. So if you remove region three, you're never going to see your articles or any of the components. Next, we have the separator between regions. And now we'll move into region 1 through 12. So region 1 holds the inset position as well as the top 1 through 6 and the style 1 through 6. So our region width, do we want it to be fixed to the body or fluid? So here we have fluid. Do we want to collapse the bootstrap gutters? Bootstrap actually puts a margin between each module position. So let's say that you have four module positions. You're going to have a gutter in between each of them. But what if you want them all slammed together and tight? You can click Collapse the Bootstrap Gutters. So what we've added is we've added the CSS to collapse those gutters so you don't have to manually go in, recompile the Bootstrap CSS. We've just made an override for it. Next, we have our region one padding. This is the padding for the region. So we have 200 pixels on top, zero to the left, zero to the right, and 300 on the bottom. Next, you have your device view. So you can hide the device view here for each region. 
So let's say that you don't want it to be on portrait tablets, you don't want it to be on phone tablets or phones. You can select it right here. As well, you can have different region padding. And as you see here, we've decreased the region padding once you go to mobile level by quite a lot. So for region two, same thing. You have your selection for width fixed or fluid, collapse and bootstrap gutters, no or yes, region two padding. Then you have your sidebars. Region 2 through 11 have the availability for a left and right sidebar. So here you've got your sidebar widths. Since we're talking about a bootstrap template, what we're looking at is 12 columns. So your left and your right, right now this is set to 2 and 2. So that's going to take up 4. So your main area in the middle will be 8 columns. So you have to think about the whole 12 column grid layout when you think about these. So you can set this all the way up to 12. But since we have no sidebars here on the region two turned on, we're not really worrying about it. It can be set for whatever it's set for. So here we're not hiding it, but we have a zero padding when we get to the device view. Next is region three. Same thing here. The only added difference is that we have a, our component in region three. So we have our component padding here, and then we have our device view and our region three device padding. So the rest of these regions, they're gonna be the same exact settings. You have your fixed or fluid, collapse the gutters, your padding, your sidebars, and so on. Down here in the footer, you can have a sticky footer, yes or no. You, the footer width is fixed or fluid, the padding, and the device padding. So that sets up the grid, and the grid is what sets up basically your layout options. Next is the styles. Styles is where we do all the styling. So we're going to look at style one. Style one through four are basically the same with different parameter options here that you can choose. They all have the same parameters, but you can save different values in them here. So here's our base colors. Our base colors set up the basis of the color scheme of the template. So you'll see on style one, we're using blues and yellows. Then we have our white, gray, and darker gray. And if we look at style two, you'll see we've changed the color scheme. Style three, different color scheme. So if you need to change one of the colors, if you don't like the blues, if you wanna change all the blues at once, go ahead and change it here. The yellows here, and then so on. Next, we have our button colors. We have our default button color, and then we have the bootstrap buttons. So we're actually overriding the bootstrap buttons to adhere to the color scheme of your template. So you can set the primary, the info, the success, the warning, the danger, and the inverse right here. Next is our typography colors. So the main body text color, your heading class, your H1 through 6 font color, your global link color, and your global hover color. The back to top, the back to top coloring here is an option in our effects that we're going to look at next, but this gives you styling ability for the color and the background color. Next is the body. In the body, we have the overlay background cover and overlay background image. The overlay is an optional panel that will overlay your website if you have a module position in the overlay module position. And what happens there is you have one module with an overlay on top of the website. When the user scrolls, that overlay slides up, revealing the website. If you would like to see a good, good example of this, you can check out our Burger Time template on our demo page where we use this option. But this sets out the background color or a background image. Next is your body background video. And this is the video that you want to put in for a background video. So since Joomla won't allow you right now in the media manager to um, upload a MP3 file, you basically have to upload your file to the templates, airflow, images, backgrounds, and then call it here such as clouds.mp4. And you only have to use an MP4. You don't have to use multiple extensions. So that will set up a background video. Next you have your background video display. Do you want it on the home page? All pages or none. 
background video loop, yes or no, mute it. The opacity, the opacity, you can set some opacity on it so you can show the video on top of your background image if you want. Video speed, this can be really fun. You can slow or speed up the video right here. And preload. So I would suggest none so the video isn't preloading so your page loads quicker. Or you can set it to auto and that will load it before or the metadata. Next is your body homepage style. So your background color here. Then you have your background image. Then you have your image position, your image size. And next we have our device view options. We have three options for the device view. You can either have no images at device view. You can say, yes, I want to call that main image that I set up here. Or you can say swap. So what we're doing here is we have our main body picture here. And then we have one that's scaled down to 979 for the tablet, 768 for the portrait, and 480 for the phone. And it's swapping those out at each device level. It would be really nice if it could automatically like thumbnail these for you, cache them, and put them in. The problem being with that is that on mobile devices, you might need a larger height image. Because if we just scale that body S1, it's not going to be tall enough when you get down to the 480. So basically, that kind of messes up the idea of automatically doing this, unless it's automatically scaling and building. So we've given you the option just to put them in there. And heck, if you wanted to have a different image when they're on mobile, this is perfect for you. You can just put a different image back there when they're on the phone. Next, we have the subpage styles. So this is the body background for the front page. So we allow you to do a different background for your subpages because maybe on your home page you want to have some big image, but on the subpages you just want to have some subtle image. So here you can set the background color, background image, image position, outer wrap background. Then you have the same options for your device view. And you're going to see this throughout all the regions. Next we have our header. We have a header top wrap color. There is top left and top right module positions. They are above the header. That's a place maybe to put social icons or an address or a phone number. This assigns a background color to it. The header full width background style. You have a header wrap background style. Then you have a sticky background color. So this allows you to have two different values. One for when the header is website is at the top. And as someone scrolls down, and if you have a sticky header on inside of the grid to where it sticks to the top of the site, it can change colors. So maybe for use in this template, we wanted to have a transparency on the top for the header wrap. But when you scroll, we didn't want it to be transparent because it might get muddled up inside of all the images. So we want to change it to a darker transparency. Next, you can have a header wrap image. You can have a header image position, you can have an outer wrap background image size, auto cover or contain, then you have your device options for your image, then you have your header fixed width. So what we're actually looking here is the full width that we talked about going from side to side on the screen, no matter how wide, then we have our fixed width, which is our inner wrap, which is that 1280 that we set up inside the grid. So here are the same options, so you can have a different wrap and a different inner. Next is the logo. So we have our website logo image here. We have our logo padding, our logo image position, our positioning of the image from left, top, or right, our logo text, you can add text in, our text padding, our text color, and the text position. Then we have our mobile logo here. So it's the same settings, and as you see, what we chose to do here in this template is we don't want to have the logo, so we just have no image, but we have our logo text. Next is our menu styling. So you've got the background color for the main menu, and that's the whole menu itself. Then you have the menu item, each item's background color, the hover background cover for the item, and the 
item active background color. Next, we have the text color. The text color, the text hover color, the text active color, main menu parent icon. If you have a drop down menu on the main menu, you can choose from right here to say, okay, well, I want to have a icon that shows that there's a drop down. So you can have a angle down, angle left, double down, whatever you'd like. And then you have a hover effect. So if you want it to go right 90 degrees, so you want to point down when they hover, you set it right there. Now we have the main menu border position. Now you can have a border top, right, left, bottom, or all the way around boxed border. Right now we have it set for zero because we don't want to show the border. If you want to show the border, just set this to a different pixel width. You have your style, which can be solid, dotted, grooved, ridge, whatever the border style is, your border color, hover color, active color, and the radius. So if you want it to be rounded, you would change the border radius there. Then we have our main menu drop-down style. So this is the drop-down background color for the full drop-down, the border radius, if you want it to be rounded. Then you have your menu item, background color, the background hover, the background active, drop-down item border radius. So if you want to have the, the wrap that goes around it, the background color, rounded, you can do that. The menu text color, the menu text hover color, active color, and then the icons that we discussed up here to have it if there's a sub-menu, uh, the border, same as the main menu, and the border radius. So you see, you have a lot of styling options here. Uh, if you choose to use a few of them, great. If you want total control, you can basically do whatever you'd like to do to the styling right here inside the template manager without opening one line of code. So now let's look at the module style. So we have a module wrap background color, and this is for your default module styling. Uh, if you're familiar with Joomla, you know that there are module class suffixes. If you look at our demo, you can see our module suffixes, which you can add different styling, different modules, just by adding a suffix class inside of the module. But right here, this module is for your default module. So you can have a background color on the whole wrap. You can have a background color around the title. Then you can have a first word color, and the rest of the words color. So maybe you want your first word to be one color and you want the rest of the words to be another. You simply do that by typing your, in the module title, your name of your first word, then two pipes, the upward slash, two of them, and then the rest of it. And that will assign the first word color to this and the rest to this. Then you have your module border radius. So if you want to have rounded module styles, you would set the border radius there. Now we're going to get into the regions, which eh, all the regions here are basically the same except for region 3 because that does hold the component. So I'm going to be pretty brief here and discuss how this works. So we have our full width background style for region 1. So this is region 1 wrap, S1. We want this to repeat. We want it fixed. Okay, what this is, this is the balloons, the background balloons that are sliding up. We're going to get into the effects in a moment, and so I'll show you how to make those slide up. So this is the region one full width. So we want the full width to go up like that. The region one wrap device view options. Again, we're swapping the images out here with different images. Then we have our fixed and our fixed width background. We have another image. This is the foreground balloons. Again, we have our device options, which we've selected swap. So we have two images layering on top of each other and they swap out at mobile level. So let's go ahead and look at region three where we have our other settings here. So we have our region wrap, our device view options, region three background style, region three device view options. Then we have our component background style. You can change the color. And then for region three, you have your left and right because the left and right of region three are gonna be your sidebars for your content. So we allow you to have a wrap around them. So if you wanna have a full wrap from top to bottom, not just ind independent modules sitting there, you wanna wrap those, you can change the color right here. So region four through 12 are all the same. You're gonna have a color value or an image value, device options, and so on. Next is the footer, same thing, and J content. Now this is where we style the J content. So you've got your page title, 
for Joomla. You've got your image is for Joomla, your image opacity, and your image background color. So let's say that you have a bunch of images and they're different colors, but you want to give them a, a tint of the color of the template. You can set the opacity down so it's a little bit transparent and the color shows through. This is why we give you this option. You've got your image border radius if you want to make the images round. You've got your J content article title. This is your article title color. Now we move into the category blog. This is the category title color, the blog item background color, the blog item text color, blog item padding, and the border radius. So if you want each blog item to have its own wrap around it, you could go ahead and set a background color. If you want that to be uh, rounded, you can set it there. Then we have the read more button for Joomla content. Position it left or right. The background color, background text color, border color. Then you have your hover color, your hover text color, and your hover border color. And this is a global button border radius. So if you want all of your buttons to be a little rounded, you can set it right there. Next, we're going to move into the typography. So here in the typography, your first selection is your text direction, RTL or LTR, left to right or right to left. Next is the web font selector. So here is where you would put in your web font if you're using a Google font like we're using here. You just copy this from the uh, Google fonts page, the link, and here's our link to our fonts. Next, you've got your body font. So you have, for your fonts, you have a desktop and you have a mobile. So you have your font size here. Here's the font family we're calling from the Google Fonts and our font weight. Next, we have our body font size, our body font family, and font weight for mobile. So if you want to have different sizing for mobile, say that at the desktop you want to have a smaller size, but mobile you want people to be able to read it on their phone easier, you can change it right here inside of the template manager. Next is our menu. So you have your desktop, main menu font size, your font family, your font weight, your drop-down font size, font family, and font weight. Then you have your mobile options. Logo, same thing. You've got your font size for your text and mobile. Global headings, this is your font family and your font weight for your H1 through H6. Same here for mobile. Your component heading, for the component view, if it has a component title, desktop and mobile, your categories for your Joomla content, your articles, your modules, and the breadcrumb. Next we have the custom code. So if you have a head code, say um, a tracking pixel or something, that it says you want to put it in the head of the template, you put it right here. If it requires a body code, put it right here. And if there's some additional JavaScript you want to add, it'll be executed at load time, you would put it right there. Next is our effects. And this is where it gets pretty cool with uh, the new version 4.0 of the XTC framework. We have effects packages. Now these effects packages are installed in the template and we also will have add-ons shortly available on Joomla XTC. And the add-ons will allow you to go ahead and install new effects packages. So we'll have a lot of different effects. And what we'll be doing here in the future is we'll be trimming down these effects. Right now we have a lot of them in here, but some of them we're not using in this template. So they won't be included in future templates, but you can download the package and install it just like you install a plugin to Joomla. So this is the background effects here. And this is for the backgrounds. Now the background images is what we're talking about here. We're talking about the balloons, for instance. So how are we making those balloons slide upward? Well, what we're doing here is we enable it. We don't want to enable it for mobile. And we put a selector here on the group. So our region one wrap, that's the outer wrap for region one. We want to set the animation for move up. We want to loop it and we want to set a speed for 40 seconds. You have all these different seconds here, one through 20, but if you need to add a higher value, you can type it right in here. And then we have our image size, and this is the image size. Next, <clears throat> we're moving the region seven wrap. 
and that's where we have um, our skydiver and the hang glider, and we're moving it down. Actually, that's the clouds. Excuse me. <laughs> the clouds uh, are the, the wrap, so we move the clouds down, and then we have here in the region seven, which is the inner wrap, move up left, that's where we have our skydiver and such. So basically, you can go ahead and you can select any region that you want, or actually, you can create a, a div class and have a background on it and go ahead and assign it right here and move it. So all this is is basically a um, CSS where we're moving the background via CSS. Back to top, you can have a back to top button. You can enable it here. You can have the position bottom right, bottom left, or bottom center. The offset is where you want the button to show. So let's say that you don't want the back to top button to show immediately when the site loads, but you want them to have to scroll down about 300 percent to actually start to see the button. Then we have the offset opacity and this is to fade it in. So if you want it to be basically transparent and then fade in, you would set this here. Scroll duration, this is uh, the scroll to top duration. The icon, what icon do you want to use for it? We're using a font awesome icon here, so we're using an arrow circle up and the icon size. Next is Gradify. We're not using this in this template. If you check out our food truck template, you'll see this. What this does is it can do background gradient animations. So you put your element in here, say that you want your region one or region one wrap, the transition speed, the opacity, and then you would set this up with your start value and your stop value and your start value and your stop value. So what this does is it basically gives you a gradient background and then it cycles through these different start and stops. So it changes colors. The hover effects, this is for CSS3 hover effects. Uh, you'll see it throughout the template. Instead of hovering over in uh, like a read more button and it changes colors real quick, we just have a transition effect. So we've basically set up the buttons and the core part of Joomla with the transition. So you just turn it on and um, the menu will work like that and the header and the read more buttons and such. But if you want to add custom classes like we did here for the footer wrap sticky scroll, so where that actually slides in nicely. And then we have our easing function here. This is a JavaScript easing function. Then we have J particles. J particles, you can check it out here at the particle ground, and it basically does um, the particle effect where you have a bunch of dots connecting with lines moving around. Then you can do a wave, or you, if it's holidays, you want to do snow. Parallax effect. Uh, we should all know what parallax effects are, but these affect the region background. So if you want to do a parallax effect on the region one, region one wrap, no, but on region one, yes, and so on. Next is the preloader. This enables a preloader. You've got your, your speed for the speed of it, how long it should wait before it opens up. You've got the background color, preloader style. We have many different styles in here. Your text, if you want to have text on the, the preload page, your text color, your transition style, slide up, fade, slide open, split, and then you have your preloader color for your preloader style here. Next is the scroll to reveal that we talked about, the scroll to reveal library, scroll to reveal.js. We can enable it here or disable it for mobile or desktop. Scroll rotate. This will rotate an item as you scroll. If you look at our hue template, our demo of our hue template, you'll notice that the logo spins as you scroll. So you would just put a, a class here, like let's say you have a kitty cat and you have a div class kitty cat, you would put your class here, kitty cat, enable it, and as you scroll, the cat would spin. Now we have our share JS, and it's a lightweight JS library to create custom share icons. You can notice it in the template. In the articles, you'll see that there's share icons, and this is what does it with the buttons. Next, we have a smooth scroll. 
And this basically does the smooth scrolling effect for the website. So when you scroll, everything scrolls smooth. It's not really jerky. You can enable this or disable it, and you can change all the different variables here. Now under the advanced setting, we have different ways that we can load the CSS. We can load it in separate files, because right now inside the template, there's about four or five different CSS files. You've got your grid CSS file, your typo CSS file, your style CSS file, your default CSS file, and if you have a custom file, custom.css or template.css, where you put your custom overrides, this is going to be loading in separate files. You can go ahead and compress it into a single file, or you can do head embedding. CSS compression, yes or no. Front page components, this will show the component on front page or not. So most of our templates, we assign it to no, because all we want to show on the front page are modules. We don't need to show our front page articles, so we select no. Include jQuery. This is here to include the jQuery in no com conflict mode. If you're having a jQuery conflict, you might want to turn this off first and see what happens, but this is calling jQuery. If you have uh, another item that's calling jQuery, you can turn this off. And menu assignment, uh, this is for the multi-site thing that Joomla has, so this is a Joomla standard. If you need more information on that, you can go ahead and check it out on joomla.org. So, this has been a pretty long video. I hope this gets you started quickly. I hope this helped you to understand how our template frameworks work, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.